Hi everyone, welcome to another video. I recently received in PR some makeup from Florisys, which I have been wanting to try for a really long time. Now, not sponsored, zero sponsor, just sent in PR, no strings attached, no mandatory review, nothing. I received the eye palette. This is actually the new pastel one, so I really wanted the darker neutral one, but they sent me the newer one, which has the pastel colors, and they also sent me the um, Eastern Beasts face palette. This is the one that I actually specifically requested from them, so I'm really glad that they sent this to me. And then they did also send me a setting powder that I'm also very interested in trying. I know Tara Babies really likes their setting powder. They also did send me a cleansing oil and a makeup cleansing balm and I will go over those quickly at the end of the video because I have actually used those off camera. I also did participate in the Sephora. There was a Sephora Labor Day sale and I was able to use my Rouge Reward gift card on that finally. So I picked up, um, one of the things I picked up was the Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation. Aside from that, I will not use too many other things that are super new because I don't want to use too many new products all at once, but that's kind of an overview of what I'm using today. So I'm very excited. With that, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my under eye primer, which is the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Eye Base. I swear my eyelids are aging so much all of a sudden. It like bothers me. Like they're so wrinkly and I feel like they're getting wrinkly faster and I don't really know what to do about it. I have been into just using like mists to prime my skin lately. I find it actually works pretty well, and I know that in China and Korea it's very popular to do this as opposed to using primers. There are definitely primers on the market, like I know that there there have been, you know, primers come out all the time from brands, like Hints has one that I was going to try way back in the day, but I just never ended up trying it. So you can definitely get like standard fair primers, but at the same time a lot of people just use mists specifically, like they'll use like serum and skincare mists, but I'm going to just use my D'Alba setting spray, which is like, it doubles as like a serum mist and a makeup mist. So I got the shade 110, which is probably going to be a little bit light for me, but the reason I had to do that is because, because I have swatched 120 in store before, which is the shade I thought I would be, and that shade is so, so dark and yellow on me. I'm going to use my under eye brightener, and I actually have discovered I do really like like using a little bit on the corners of my mouth. Something about it is just a magical brightener. I can just use everywhere. It doesn't completely conceal it, but it just kind of like brightens it a little bit somehow. I'm not sure. And I know you have to like turn it to unlock it. Like this is locked and then you unlock it. Yeah, this shade is going to be a little bit light for me. And the undertone is, it says it's neutral. So, and I do find that neutral foundations tend to work better for me, especially if they actually are a smidgen warm. So I've been wanting to try the new Synchro Skin Foundations ever since they released. So at this point, it has been probably like two years, a year to two years, maybe even three. I can't remember how old these foundations actually are. So it's been a long time coming. And as I've mentioned before, I don't tend to forget products once I decide I want them. I will just like think about them. I have a dry patch right here that it's kind of sitting a little bit funny on. It's like, it's radiant, but at the same time, I feel like there's some spots on my face that it's actually looking a little bit dry on. Okay, and so I'm gonna use my concealer now, which is just my standard fare. Haven't changed this concealer in a very long time. They did release a shade that is a little bit lighter. Like they released the light version. So I, it's been out for like several months now at this point and I've been wanting to pick it up. I'm just waiting for finally have the extra makeup budget available to place an order from Beauty Box Korea because every time I buy stuff off Beauty Box Korea, I really have to make sure I buy, you know, a lot at once. So I clear my wish list in chunks, otherwise the shipping really, it's not worth it. I'm gonna put on some eye primer. And as usual, I'm just using my Rare Beauty eye primer, which is pretty much what I use like 95% of the time. I've started dotting it on my eyelid instead of just drawing a line, because then I can spread it out further across my eyelid. Okay, so I'm going to test out this setting powder here. This is the Peach Blossom Powder, but here is the packaging. Here's how you open it. You take this, and then you just turn it, and then it'll open. So it is a very nice, secure packaging. There is an extremely fluffy powder puff inside, which is really cool. And then when you open the lid, the powder is, yeah, my ISO is too high, but the powder is inside, is underneath a netting. So it's not like one of those like standard filters, like the Bare Minerals powder foundation. It's more like the Huda Beauty one where there's like a net. So um, that's, that's what that is. 
I'm gonna focus this mostly like under my eyes and on my nose because I am gonna be putting down other powder products on my face. It is very, very, very finely milled. It definitely reminds me of the flower nose powders. I will continue, of course, to use this. Really, really nice. I do really like this so far. And now I'm gonna do my eyebrows. I don't have any Floris' eyebrow products or anything. Like I said, I only got sent these three color, these three um, products as far as makeup goes. It was like, it was a small little PR box. So I'm going to use the Too Faced pomade in a pencil in the shade Soft black. I'm not sure what kind of makeup look I'm gonna do yet, but given the color scheme of the palette being so pastel heavy, it's definitely not gonna be a super intense look. And then I'm gonna use the Glossier Brow Flick to fill in the front. Not the best eyebrows I've ever done. But that's okay. So I'm actually going to go ahead and finish off my face makeup first. So this is the Eastern Beasts palette. And as you can see, of course, the inside has beautiful embossings that are relevant to Chinese mythology. There's the dragon, there's the phoenix, there's the turtle, and there is the tiger. All very, very important animals to the Chinese mythos. So I'm going to first just start off with this contour shade, which this was the primary reason I've been wanting to try this palette for so long, is because of this contour shade right here. It just seemed really, really nice. Now, do I have other contour shades in my collection that look similar to this? Uh, yeah, probably. Whenever I'm looking at new makeup brands, I'm always a sucker for like trying the contour. This is warmer than the Flower Nose one, but it is not too warm. I did put on a little too much on this side. These powders are a little more pigmented than I expected. I usually always expect to like need to go in with a lot. Yeah, you can see I put on too much. Okay, so I'm gonna go into that matte setting powder now, and I'm going to use that to kind of pull back the contour. Very pretty, and especially once I, as you can see how much smoother the blend looks when you apply this powder on top. I think on its own, this contour powder requires a little more effort to blend out to an even soft diffuse finish than other contour powders in my collection but it is very easy to work with like considering that there is like a matte powder right here that you can use to diffuse this out i don't necessarily think that's like too much of a dig against it if it was like a single contour powder and it didn't blend out super easily i would be a little bit oh i'm docking points for that but i think that's fine and then i'm going to use the blush which is as you can see it is a warm blush so that's why i was not sure what kind of look i would want to do if i'm using this blush with it but if the blush doesn't match that's all right we'll just we'll just roll with it you guys it has a very slight sheen to it since this is not really like it's not like a true pressed powder it's more like it, the powders here they remind me of a cheek pop but it's a still a little bit more powdery than a cheek pop but it doesn't feel like a true pressed powder it's very soft so it's good for just like that very just kind of toned down blush look of course the biggest downside to these kinds of products is that, you know, there's going to be part of me then, and this has been a very common thing I've noted with people where it's very difficult to actually feel like you can use these because of the fact that the embossings are so beautiful that with repeated use, naturally the embossings will be worn down. And I know there are definitely some people out there who have, who are extremely dedicated to wanting to be able to collect these pieces and have them more as display items and so they actually bought duplicates which if you want to do that i am not judging because i totally get it i am probably just going to like admire everyone else's look on the internet at the beautiful photos but if i want to use this and i use the embossings down then so be it. If Florasis ever wants to send me PR again, I, I may ask them for a duplicate of this specifically because I do have a very soft spot for the mythical beasts in Chinese mythology. I used to be obsessed, like hyper fixated on dragons and mythology, less so now, but that was kind of like my childhood. So I am definitely have a very soft spot for this palette's embossings in particular. So of all the things I would get a duplicate of for collection purposes, this might be it. But at the same time, I want to also be able to use and enjoy this. There is a highlighter in here. I'm going to go into this highlighter after I'm finished with the eyeshadow. Seems like a really, really pretty highlighter. It kind of like gives me like revelation vibes. We'll see. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on the eye makeup. Okay, I did zoom in a tad so that you can see the eyes better. And I'm going to go ahead and get started. So again, here's what the palette looks like. I have it tilted up so that you can kind of see it without it being too washed out. So pretty. That middle shade in particular looks like that 
mm, coral to gold pink duochrome. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this eggplant shade over here. This actually reads more, it looks like more like it's a matte. Now, none of the shades in here look true matte because again, they all look like they're going to have that sheen to them, kind of like a cheek pop. So I definitely do see shimmers finishes in here, but the mattes look more like just like that suede or very, very muted satin kind of formula, which I think is really, really flattering and pretty. So I'm going to start with the eggplant shade. I'm going to use a brush. This is more like a warm purple, so it shouldn't clash too much with the blush, but we'll see. If I need to add some brown to kind of tweak it a little bit, I will. Um, it does not have glitters in the shade, it's just that this brush has stray glitter. And again, the embossings in this palette are all very, very beautiful. There's a lot of eyeshadows I want from this brand. There's a darker version of this that's more just like neutral tones that are darker. There's the fan palette, I do really want all of those, they are so pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the lower lash line as well. As you can see, it is not it is not building up to a fully opaque finish, but I think you also can see that it has so far for me blended very easily. Now I am applying thin layers. I'm not really digging into the pan too hard and I'm building it up slowly. What I really like about this so far is that it is the kind of eyeshadow formula that is going to be very friendly if you have dry skin because I feel like it is, I'm able to build up layers. It is adhering to my eyelid skin and it is not feeling mattifying or drying. However, as you can also see, these are not opaque shadows by any means. I am getting a very seamless and easy blend, but you can still see the color of my natural skin beneath the eyeshadow. So if you are the kind of person where these kinds of this kind of pigmentation does not make you happy, then this brand's eyeshadows will probably go ahead and be a skip for you. I don't really have like eyeshadows that I'm like super super like against using. In case you guys haven't noticed, I kind of tend to just like just about anything. So I don't mind a more sheer shadow as long as it's easy to blend. And I am using a Sonia G Worker Builder 3. This is a flatter, denser, and it's also a natural hair brush. Yeah, I do. I do really like the blend so far. It's I'm going to go ahead and use my finger and I'm going to go into the center shade, which the pan of this is a lot bigger. Ooh, ooh, okay, I'm really excited. Now I'm sticking this over my bare skin so there's no dark base for this to kind of shine through. I'm sure this is one of those shades that if I put it on top of a darker base, it might look nice. Seemed kind of, seemed flashier on my finger, but let me, let me build up some more layers. See, that's the problem with these kinds of shades is sometimes they'll look real nice on your finger and then you lay it down and you're like, where'd it go? <laughs> I kind of want to see what this shade would look like if I put it on top of the dark brown. I wonder if that would really allow the shift to shine through more. These, This kind of coral to pink shift sometimes doesn't show up very well on a bare eyelid, especially if your eyelid is like the same shade as the base pigment of the eyeshadow. So I do want to try that in a later at a later date. But I'm going to go in with a brush now. Yeah, I'm already wearing away the cloud embossing on this. Okay, this is definitely going to be still a... It seems like there's almost like a top overspray on this shade as well that just made it look really, really nice and clean because I think, um, if you can kind of tell, look where my brush has scraped away and do you see how suddenly the shadow looks a lot more vivid where my brush has been? So I wonder if there was some kind of just like overspray on this shade to make it look just a little bit more like clean and you can see the details more and as my brush is scraping through I'm kind of getting towards the actual pigment. I'm wondering if that's the case. I will experiment with this shade more because that is that's an interesting thought because now suddenly it looks a lot better now that I've kind of broken through that and I'm getting down below. I really want to try the turquoise shade which is right here. I'm going to use this on the lower lash line. I know they're going to clash but I don't care. The shade looks like it has a much more chunky feeling to it, like you can see how it's got- it's a little bit thicker and chunkier. So there's no like actual PET glitter in here, thank goodness. It's gonna look more sparkly, and it doesn't actually have any real base pigmentation, it's just that the sparkles themselves have that turquoise teal blue-green shade. 
you know with of course Chinese beauty trends they're always going to favor their neutrals so this is really bold coming from them and lastly I'm going to well not lastly but for the inner corner I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this shade here there's a warmer inner corner and then there's a cooler inner corner this looks more smooth this looks more sparkly but I'm gonna go for the warmer one because I do really want to make sure I still can to some extent match my blush it picks up fine using a brush but I can definitely tell I'm like totally wrecking the embossing which is such a shame uh, I thought this shade was going to be more smooth, but it also is more of that translucent, glossy kind of shade. I guess I shouldn't have been surprised because this is definitely the trendy preferred finish. Uh, you can see though, see how there's a bit of a cast? It's a little bit too dark to use as a true inner corner highlight, but it looks good from the front. I also didn't get any fallout with that eggplant shade that I used earlier. So these shades are going to also be, I think, very beginner friendly, very easy to use in that regard as well. I'm going to use this shade on the lower inner corner now. Okay, I'm going to go back into my Sonia G brush and I'm going to use the darker brown and I'm going to use that to add some depth. I did want this look to be a little bit darker than it ended up being. I am going to go ahead and do a little bit more of this shade. I just want it to blend into the inner corner highlight a little bit better. It actually looks really, really pretty. So I definitely do think there was kind of like a weird layer on top, but now it's gone. Um, lastly, I'm going to go back into that eggplant shade and I'm going to take it on a very loose, fluffy brush. And I just want to make sure I can blend it out further. I think this, this eye look could benefit from being blown out just a little bit more. Really just kind of merge into the blush. Okay, lastly, I'm going to take that same inner corner shade I used and I'm going to just dot it on my middle finger like that and I'm just going to use it to just bring it up and over everything. That's just what I like to do. I know it's totally something I do in basically every video I've been doing for the past few months, but it looks so good on me personally in my humble opinion and I don't care if anyone else disagrees. I honestly, okay, I will be honest, after seeing the slew of sponsored Florist's videos, I was honestly super, super skeptical. So I was very happy when Florist's did want to send me PR, but I also was like hoping that they wouldn't get too pissed off at me if I decided that their products were not good. So far, I have to say I am a lot more impressed than I thought I would be. I obviously am not going to say that this is a finalized review, obviously, but so far I actually really, really have been enjoying this palette. I am very surprised. I love the look I got out of this. It is definitely not what I would have expected from Florisys and certainly not what I was really expecting out of this palette, but I absolutely love it. And yeah, I'm, I'm surprised. I will be completely honest. I'm very surprised. So I will definitely do more looks with this palette. I'm, I really, I really, really need to actually start just generally, I need to like just work harder and do better because I I know it's not my fault but I just feel like I'm always so so lazy and I know I'm not there's a lot of factors contributing to me not being able to do as much as I thought I would but I still will always just end up blaming myself for being lazy so I feel like I need to stop being lazy which I know is not true but that's just how I feel and I'm sure some of you out there will totally understand I really need to start making more content just like buckle down, suck it up extremely toxic for me to say to myself but that's just how I feel so hopefully I can get more looks um, maybe just as like shorts or reels or something, but if not, I will do another video with this, I guess maybe. We'll see. I'm gonna do lashes. I'm gonna put on lashes, sorry. I'm gonna put on lashes and I'll be right back to finish off the face and put on something for my lips. Okay, I am back. I have my lashes on, which are a little bit haphazard. Um, so for my mascara, I initially went in with black mascara, but then I thought to myself, I really wish my lashes were a little bit more colored. So I ended up going over it with the Pat McGrath Dark Star Mascara, which is in this bright blue shade and it mixed with the black to produce just a very barely blue black so it's very hard to tell but I actually really like the effect this might be too much of a cooler purple but I did recently pick up a couple um, two more Shiseido Kajal ink artist shades I just got the ones that were on sale at Macy's at the time when Macy's was doing cash back plus 15% off so one of the ones I got was plum blossom 
and I just discovered I truly love this ink artist formula. It's so much better than the liners. So I'm going to use this to draw some liner. Now you can blend it out like a sh shadow, but if you just let it set, it'll set like a liner. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to revisit the Eastern Beasts face palette. I'm going to use the highlighter shade now, which is this shade right here. And my fingers should be clean, so I'm just going to go ahead and use my finger. I am wondering if this is going to be similar to Revelation from Flower Nose because of the fact that it is, again, another Chinese brand. There is kind of a preferred highlighter finish for like Chinese beauty that Flower Nose pretty much does perfectly. Ooh, yes, it does remind me of Revelation, but it is even smoother. I was worried this might have a cast on my nose, but you can see how the base, is, the base pigmentation is translucent. It's not actually leaving much of a cast. I'm really happy. This is going to be the Flower Nose Eastern Beast highlighter, which it is very soft, so definitely the embossing is going to get smushed already. Which here is the Revelation packaging. So here they are together. I think you can tell the Flower Nose one is still going to have a lot more shine to it, but they feel very similar on my finger. So here they are swatched out on the palm of my hand. This one is going to be the, the one from the Eastern Beast palette, and this is the Flower Nose one. So you can see the Flower Nose one is even more transparent. The Flower Nose one is ever so slightly more warm in champagne, but you can see how they both have that really glossy, translucent finish. So pretty. I do think the Flower Nose one still remains my favorite just because of how shiny and glossy it is. But the Flower Nose one, as you can see, is a little bit more subdued, but also it is a little bit smoother. Definitely, I'm really happy that this highlighter has this texture in that Eastern Beast palette because I think at this point in time, it's about the closest you're going to get to Revelation. I love Chinese highlighters. I think they just do such a great job. So I do have some Korean lip liners I want to try because lip liners are all the rage in Korea right now, but I don't have them yet. So. So I'll just use what's in my collection. The Romand ones are pretty much all sold out on YesStyle and I'm really bummed including the taupe one I was looking forward to so I'm gonna use this shade I think. It's not, it's, it's, these are not as pigmented as they look in the tube. It's the Romand Glasting Melting Balm in the shade Nougat Sand. I think I'm gonna use this and now you definitely don't want to screw these up too much because as you can see they're really soft. These are really nice. They are a little bit sticky, but they're a very, very thick balm, almost like kind of like a gloss stick, which is again, a very trendy formula right now, both in Korea and in America and also in China too. But yeah, as you can see, it's really not as pigmented as it looked in the tube. So it's going to work really, really well. So, okay. So that is going to be my finished makeup look with my Rogue Runaway Lashes. So I just don't want to deal with it right now. Okay, so thank you guys for watching until the end. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me try a couple of new makeup products. Not not too many, but just, just a couple. Uh, so just to quickly recap, the Shiseido foundation I'm going to have to keep trying. I felt it was a little bit drying. Now I didn't use like a primer primer, so I will try it with like actual primers as opposed to just mists and I'll see what happens. I also feel like when I mist my face, I don't always use enough. I think I need to like actually use more to really get the juice into the skin. So I will experiment with that, but I do find the coverage, especially with the powder on top to be really nice, solid medium. With my setting powder, it looks nice. Although I think it's more a testament to the setting powder, but I will keep fiddling around. I did find the Eastern Beasts palette to be a lot of fun to work with. I do really like every single shade in here. However, this bronzer contour shade was actually a little bit difficult to blend. Now, disclaimer, I generally speaking don't set my face before I put powders down because my skin is so dry that the powders will like set my face at the same time that they put pigment down. So if you were to set your face beforehand, I think you'll have a much easier time with blending out that contour bronzer shade. But on top of an unset face, I did find that I had to use this matte powder to blend it out, which doesn't bother me because obviously it's in here. So it's very easy for me to use both of these to get a nice blend since they come in the same palette. I'm not really going to take points off for that, but I just wanted to mention that. The blush is really nice. As you can see, it's definitely much of a much more softer blush not quite as like darker intense really really pretty and easy simple color though and the highlighter is definitely the best shade in this palette which i was totally expecting and i'm not let down gorgeous and you can even see on my nose just how beautiful it is chinese highlighters definitely are where it's at for me right now i feel like they just do everything the eyeshadow palette totally shocked me 
I actually had a lot of fun working with it and I think I created a really cute pretty look. I am looking forward to working with this palette more and I will definitely update you guys in the future of my final thoughts on this. The only thing I have to say as I've mentioned is that the matte finish shades in this palette are not going to be opaque. They are going to be sheer, they're going to be see-through, they're going to be buildable. They do blend so easily. You can see the blend I got is just absolutely flawless and perfect. But if you need opaque shadows, if you want your shadows to look on your eyelid how they look in the pan, then this is not the palette for you because these shadows definitely are meant to be a lot more sheer. And then lastly, the last thing that makeup item I got from Florisys that is this powder is actually- I had a really good first impression with this. I will keep you guys posted on how I like it. I do really, really like the packaging, like unironically like the packaging. Um, I will say I did crack mine a little bit because I have- my cats knocked it off onto hardwood and it broke, so um, I am very sad that the plastic has cracked, but other than that, everything else is fine. So it's a pretty sturdy piece of makeup. I think it mattified my skin. My skin still feels really matte, very smoothing. It definitely reminds me of the Flower Nose Loose powders. I feel like Chinese setting powders, again, are another thing that China just does best because the whole marshmallow matte, no pores, no texture, velvet finish is definitely something you can totally get with a Chinese setting powder, so no exception here. And the other two things that got sent to me that are sitting in my bathroom, so I don't have them on me, the makeup balm and the cleansing oil, they both are fine. However, the cleansing oil, it comes in individual sachets, individual single-use sachets, which is so just like inefficient. It is pretty Pretty wasteful, kind of excessive. Now I do hope to go back to China next spring and I will be going to um, Las Vegas this December so I do plan on bringing those with me because that way I don't have to check any massive liquids. They will be useful for me so I will use the bulk majority of them for that but in any other instance I can't really recommend that. The cleansing balm totally cleaned off my makeup. It has a really nice herbal smell that is not overwhelming. I much prefer the smell over the Vanilla Co vanilla smell for sure but I will say that cleansing balms are kind of a dime a dozen. There are a lot of brands that sell really great cleansing balms, so I don't think you necessarily need to get the one from Florisys. If you want to get the cheapest one, my favorite one that is a little bit on the cheaper end is the one from Vanilla Co. You can also get that one at Ulta. The, Ult the Clinique Take the Day Off cleansing balm also goes half off really, really often, and when it does, I think that's the best one, especially if you have sensitive eyes, because I have gotten that stuff in my eyes before, like totally in my eyes, like clouded up my contacts in my eyes, and it doesn't hurt or sting or burn. So I think the Clinique one is my favorite of all time, so I don't really think the Florisys one has anything else on offer aside from the packaging and the fragrance, but it does work really, really well, and I do like it. It is functional. I will use all of it up. So those are the other two products that Florisys sent me. So again, thank you, Florisys, and thank you guys so much for watching this video all the way to the end. I hope you guys like this little video. Hope you guys like the makeup look. I came up with it, and I hope to catch you guys in the next video. I'll see you guys then. Until then, take care. Goodbye.